Time for one with trig. Here's our f of x, 2 sine x, sine of 2x, interval from 0 to pi. We first take a look at whether a mean value theorem can be applied or not, just to make sure. And if I put 0 in here and pi in there, any value between 0 and pi, if I put it in here, I'm not going to get anything that's undefined. So I know that it is continuous on the closed interval. Next, we need to take a look at the derivative and see if that's continuous on the open interval from 0 to pi. Okay, so our derivative, derivative of sine is cosine. So 2 cosine x. This one is going to involve the chain rule because you have something inside that's not just a single x. So anytime you have that, you've got to apply the chain rule. We do the outside one first. Derivative of sine is cosine. So we do cosine 2x, but don't forget you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's our chain rule. Okay, so this is our derivative here. Now, if I put any number between 0 and pi in here, that's also going to be continuous. So therefore, mean value theorem definitely can be applied here. We should be able to find a C that satisfies this. So this is what we're going to do next. So we put in f prime to c. We're going to do 2 cosine of c. This we can write as 2 cosine of 2c. That, that's the left-hand side of the formula, f prime to c. Now we're going to do the right-hand side. f of b minus f of a. We want to find f evaluated at pi minus f evaluated at 0. Let's just do that. I'm going to go ahead and just write all the steps out, write it all out here. And on the bottom I have b minus a, that's pi minus 0. Let's do the top one. We're going to, remember, we're putting it into the original function. We're going to do 2 sine of 0, of zero plus sine of 2 times 0 side here. And then we're going to take this minus this evaluated at pi. Okay, so we're going to do, oh, the pi actually has to go first. So pi, at, let's put pi in first. It's, it's f of b minus f of a, so be careful you don't switch that order. It's pi in here, and then we're going to do 2 sine 0 plus sine of 2 times 0. Okay, so now it's correct. We got the b comes first, a is 0, and your b is pi. Now we have it written out correctly. Pi goes in first, and then we have the 0 here. Let's now evaluate this. Okay, we have 2 cosine of c plus 2 cosine 2c. It's going to equal on the bottom. We're going to have a pi. On top, we're going to evaluate this. We've got to use our unit circles on this. Okay, sine of pi is going to be 0. So I get 0 for this plus 0. And then inside here, we're going to evaluate each of these. Now at 0, sine of 0 is also 0. So actually, I get 0 plus 0 on the inside there. So that means that all this is going to end up equaling 0 because I have 0 over anything is going to be 0. So therefore, the main equation that I'm going to solve, I'm going to do that one, I'll just go ahead and write it in up here. We're going to do 2 cosine of c plus 2 cosine of 2c equals 0. So now I need to solve that equation uh, for c. So once we do that, we're going to first best thing to do here is we need to put in an identity for that double angle because in order to solve for this it's better if you have single values of c on that. So what I need to do is pull back my, my uh, box of tricks that I had from trig in order to solve this equation and again we have to use an identity for that one. So we're going to do 2 cosine of c plus, okay now the, the identity we're going to put in here, I want to put an identity in for a double angle of cosine that leaves me with just cosine left over. Okay, so that one's going to be 2 cosine squared c minus 1. So we have to use an identity here, and the only reason why we're doing that again is because we want to make sure we get cosine of a single angle. That way we can factor it and solve and get the answer. So I'm going to erase these to give us some space here, and then we're going to go ahead and continue with this. So 2 cosine c plus 4 cosine squared c minus 2 equals 0. We're going to rearrange the order here on this. So we're going to do 4 cosine squared c plus 2 cosine c minus 2 
equals zero. We can divide all this by two, divide that out. So two cosine squared C plus cosine C minus one equals zero. Finally, we're down to the point where we can factor this. So we get two cosine C and a cosine C to give us the two cosine squared. And we have the ones here on the end to give us the minus one. One of these will be to be a negative. We want the middle term to be positive, so that means we're gonna do a plus and a minus right there. Then we're gonna set both of them individually equal to zero. We're gonna do two cosine C minus one. We'll do that one first. If you solve that and set it equal to zero, you get cosine C equals one half. Is that your answer? No, because they ask us to solve for C, not cosine C. We need to look at the unit circle and find any angle between, remember this is from zero to pi, any angle from zero to pi that will give us uh, an x value of one half on the unit circle cosine is your x value. We need to think about what angle is associated with that and you'll, uh, the angle that goes with this one is going to be 60 degrees or it's going to be pi over three. Cosine is positive in the first and fourth quadrant, which means that this is the only answer you're going to get from this equation because we have to be between zero and pi. That's the first and second quadrant. Let's take a look at the other one. We're going to do cosine, cosine C plus one equals zero. If we set that equal to zero, we're going to get cosine C is equal to negative one. We're looking for the angle where uh, you get negative one for the x value. That's going to be at pi. So we get pi and pi over three, that does fit our interval. Our interval originally was zero to pi. So these two right here would be your final answers.